So here's some thoughts about a new series of artworks. Sorry for the bad audio, but I need to get a new camera. Um, here's, here's what I'm motivated by for, for starting to paint again. First of all, I like painting. It's fun. It's very different than what I do. Now, in some sense, the entire Bosque is an enormous living sculpture, uh, and that's exciting. But, you know, when we talk about oak trees and walnut trees I'm planting, the feedback loop is extremely slow. Even for other plants, it can take years to get things to develop. And, of course, creating something like a community is just a colossally difficult concept to actually put into motion. Lots of people talk about it. They think they want that. It's just very difficult. Painting, by comparison, is something that I can, I can do that I have control over that I can do in a shorter span of time. And also I just miss the aesthetic play of it. I miss painting. Now, one of the reasons I stopped, it's fine to paint, it's on your shirt, it doesn't matter. Uh, one of the reasons I stopped is because I couldn't sell paintings down here in Mexico. I can't ship the kind of paintings I was doing. I was doing these, these four by four foot really big paintings and they're, they're on canvas. And so I guess I could remove the canvas and roll it up and ship it but that always seemed weird, and then I have to worry about whether the paint's going to crack if I made it too thick or something. I do use acrylics, which should be somewhat flexible, uh, but it's just difficult. So, I've been mulling this all over in my head for a long time now. Um, you want to paint the back of that? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I've come up with a new style, new way of doing things. This is MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's, uh, I think, two millimeter. They also sell a three millimeter. I, if I paint on this, now I've got a, a fixed surface, and I could sandwich the painting between either two other MDFs, or maybe just one, and then wrap it in cloth, and then cardboard it, and tape it all up and ship it. Also, they're fairly lightweight, so I could have them get driven to the United States if that's where they were going to sell. I don't care whether they, it, it doesn't matter to me where they're going to sell at. In fact, I'd like to sell in Mexico, I'd like to sell in the U.S., I'd like to sell all over the entire world. It brings me to another part of the motivation. Beyond the aesthetics of it, beyond the playing, which I have a lot of thoughts about. I can envision what I want to create. One of my other motivations is that I'm now getting donations from people. I need money. I'm, uh, I'm not making it without money, without, with no income. So the donations are so awesome, but then I'm thinking... People love art, and people would love to buy art that I make, and, and that would encourage them to donate, and they get something out of it as well. So that's another reason to make something that's transportable. Then I started thinking further, and I was thinking about things like Bitcoin and alternative currencies and the art world and how, how art transfers from one, one person to another, how there's a marketplace for it. That's been totally off my radar in my artistic process, but at this point I'm thinking that could be really cool to make smaller pieces that are very well protected and so that they can transport well. So that shipping doesn't become this big like, oh I have to ship a piece of artwork and I need to get it packaged again in some fancy way, but that it's ready to go. And so these are a little bigger than I'm actually thinking. I got these cut in a pot squirrel. And the, the MDF itself is a very cheap supply. Uh, but I actually want to go smaller than this. I want to go with probably no more than about 12 by 17. And, I, and I've, got, I've done some calculating and thinking about the exact ratio I want. I want it to be the super golden ratio, which is 1.47 something in there. And, and one of the reasons I want to do it at that size is to make it easier to transport, uh, I'll even get a, a, a leather case made for every single artwork, and I'll get them made in, in Quiroga. And that's so that you could, you could slip the art into the case, and you could transport it with you as you traveled to exchange it with someone else. So the art is a medium of exchange. I'm creating a currency, and I like this on many levels. Um, one of the things I'm probably going to do with that uh, is the smaller size, I'll ring it with a, uh, a ring of copper. I'm not sure I'll do this, but I probably will. A, a, a ribbon of copper around it, kind of thick. And then use like metal brads to connect that onto the MDF. So that even if it got hit on the side pretty hard, it wouldn't squish the MDF. 
Also, I like the idea that you could then hang that just as it is. That the copper is its own frame for the artwork. I'll put Velcro on the back, and somebody could then Velcro it onto something else if they wish to, so they could still frame it in a variety of options. Another thing I want to do is uh, scan each one in. And that's another reason to do it that size, because that will fit onto a scanner. I could photograph it, but the resolution won't be as high. If I do fairly detailed work, and I want to do these, I'm, I'm going to put a lot of work into these paintings. I mean, I have some bigger paintings that are really huge, um, and I'm going to do more work on the small paintings than I even have done on, on a lot of the big ones. Uh, that level of detail, if it was scanned in at a very high resolution, would allow people to print it really big. And you know what I want to do? Because I'm into the idea of Creative Commons, because I'm, I, I'm into the idea of information being free, and I want to give as much as possible to the world, because the world is now created in such a way that we can copy information and share with everyone, so we're all wealthier. I want to give away the digital version of the art. I want to upload it to Creative Commons or give it away however I have to. And because it's scanned at such a high resolution, people can use whatever website to print it much larger and it will still look really cool. It'll look as if I painted it with a bigger brush. So the scale of it will be kind of unusual. Um, there's even places that will print on metal. They'll do glissades. They'll do you know, a variety of ways to print. Um, and so I, I love this idea of, of giving that away but having the original then have, have a higher cost. So I'll still sell the original, or if someone's donating a lot to me anyway, I'll give them a painting in exchange. Or not officially in exchange, perhaps, but, you know, I'll give them a painting. Ah, because I still like big art. But I can't deal with big art because I can't move it. I also want to put on the back of each one an RFID tag. This is uh, something like your passport has one. Uh, they use it for inventorying things and even they use it for artworks when they want to track artworks through a system. So I'll put an RFID tag on it. Everyone's going to then have its own individual serial number. Also, since somebody can check online the de very detailed picture of it and compare it with the, the, the image, there's no more issue with whether or not it's real or not. And so getting back to the kind of currency idea, you can prove that this is an individual piece of artwork since it's coded individually. You could scan it with, there's even phones that will scan RFID tags, but you could just scan in, I uh, could put a QR code on there as well. They'll all have individual names, of course, as well. Uh, so, so there's no problem with fraud. It's, it's well known whether the painting is mine or not, whether I created it. I also sort of like the idea of people trading these because I just like the activity of it. I, you know, one of the reasons that I, I would paint, not just for me, not just for, I mean, originally I just painted for my house because I wanted art, and so I made it, and I made art I want, that I liked, obviously. So one of the other thoughts is that when somebody right now, when they buy a painting, I never hear about it again. I never see it again. And that sort of feels a little weird to me because in some sense a painting, and this is a stretch I realize, a painting is a little bit like a child. It's, it's, a, it's a creation and you put it out into the world and then you never hear back and it's a little weird. Now some people have sent me pictures of them with them and the painting. I love that. I like it. I, I, I think it's cool that then I can imagine it in their life, in their living room, you know, part of their life. And so I guess I want to see that. Also from an economic standpoint, I want there to be movement of my art. I want it to continue to grow in value and I don't want it to do that just after I die. There's a lot of amazing painters out there. Like I don't think Vincent Van Gogh sold a painting in his life. And he's supposedly a great painter. I want to be a commercial success in my life now to survive. And the people who are watching me online, the people who are aware of my project, my values, my visions, I want them to be able to participate in that physically with my art. Sounds fun to me. Sound fun? Yeah, it sounds fun. How crazy can I get is my question. Which part uh, doesn't make sense? No, I mean, it makes sense. I think it's difficult. But it's not because it doesn't make sense. It's just because it's difficult. 
is difficult. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is difficult. Pretty and the well. hard part, officially the hard part is actually painting it. Yeah. But I, I, I think I can do that. I feel very confident I can make paintings I like. I have lots of experience. The question is, how do I connect my paintings in with the big art world thing? Yeah, I have no idea with that. And I'm I'm not an artist. I don't know either, and I'm not a business guy, and I, I've sold paintings at fairly low prices in the past, mm -hmm. and I guess I was happy with that, but I want to be part of the whole big picture in the art world, I guess. I, I don't just want to be a guy painting by himself in the forest. What? Nothing. I can picture you like that. You can picture me like that? <laughs> yeah, me too. And I guess it'd be okay. I have also thought about, uh, we were talking about this earlier, setting up my camera on my computer yeah. and having a wireless headset so that people can keep me company while I'm painting. Because one of my problems is I get really bored. While painting. Yeah. It's like part of the process. I, mm -hmm. I, I have to get in the groove and think, and I'm thinking aesthetically in a bunch of ways. Mm -hmm. But after certain decisions are made, you're just slogging through, filling in the shit. Yeah. And so sometimes there's hours of work where it's not honestly, in that moment, very creative. Mm -hmm. The creative part's already passed. Yeah, you're already past that. Yeah. So, anyway, so we're going to keep sealing these MDFs. We're just painting it with gray completely. The goal there is to seal it and protect it. And then, we'll, uh, when they're dry, uh, I can, when I have extra time, perhaps at night with a nice fire or something, or with a webcam, then I can just play and, and have some fun with paint. So, thanks for helping out here. Yeah, welcome. Now I'm helping to an artist. Yar. <laughs> and I do need help in many ways. <laughs> Most of them mental. All right. Bye.